Hi there booktube, don't know quite what happened there but started filming and the phone decided it wasn't going to let me film anymore so we'll start again. So today is a bit of a catch up chat video uh, I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about the completion of my adventure and buddy read on uh, War and Peace I have the vintage uh, Russian classics edition that they brought out with the beautiful covers and we did endeavour to start off on that edition. Um, both Victoria and I from, from Eve's Alexandria um, found that we were struggling a little bit with the translation, uh, primarily because they put a lot of the French in the original text with the English at the bottom rather than the English at the top and the French at the bottom which is the traditional way that Tolstoy wrote it, however it did make it very very clunky to read, especially in the first few chapters where a large majority of the text was in French and a lot of the social scenes were carried out in French so it made it very very difficult. So we changed to the Collins Classics version on our um, Kindles but we kind of flitted between the two. The translation for the Collins Classics version was um, the Maud translation and this was actually the translation that Tolstoy approved of the most. However, I did have a few small frustrations also with this translation in that um, they anglophiled a couple of the names. So Prince Andre became Prince Andrew and Princess uh, Maria became Princess Mary. And uh, one of the characters, Dolokhov, who was clearly German, was given quite um, a comical lisp um, in that uh, obviously he was instead of his R's everything was a W basically um, I really really enjoyed the book I thor thoroughly fell in love with Pierre very early on whereas I believe Victoria didn't so much um, because I found him, although very, very naive, highly intelligent and highly observant. And um, although I liked him at the beginning, I much preferred his transition throughout the course of the book. And although he does bring some humour to it, he also brings some heart and some empathy to it as well. Um, and being an illegitimate son and suddenly being thrown into the world of a large inheritance and manipulative people who only want him for his money and their own gains. Um, I found it uh, extremely interesting and he was a very, very uh, good character. The other main characters that we followed was the Rostov family, which consisted of their three children, a cousin and the mother and father. Um, they were going through a financial transition prior to the war period and um, found themselves with their eldest son going off to war, that is Nikolai, and who in this translation again was called Nicholas, um, and their daughter Natasha just coming into sort of um, the grandeur of her first ball and falling in love and uh, being very much connected completely with her cousin Sonia who resided with them and then her youngest brother who was still sort of I would say sort of in his toddler years of sort of five or six Petra and we do follow the whole family throughout the conclusion of this book right up to the very very end and um, thoroughly enjoyed that as well the other family obviously is the Bolkov Bolkashov <laughs> apologies I bet um, Victoria comes up with it much better but uh, Prince Andre and Princess Ma uh, Marie and her father are then the other family unit that we, we follow pretty much extensively throughout the whole of this book um, I just thought it was absolutely beautifully written it was very easy to read for those of you who feel quite scared and overwhelmed by it it's an easy read. I'm not going to give you any spoilers in this review. I don't want this to be a long review. I just want it to be a sort of an, an over chat of, of where I've been with it. Um, but I did find it extremely easy to read. There were a couple of dredgy bits. And when I say dredgy bits, um, these are areas where Tolstoy 
tends to go completely away from the plot and the characters and focuses a little bit on his what is clearly his penchant and his love of historical um information and non-fiction so there are small elements of non-fiction uh, within the course of the book these usually sort of are two three chapters throughout the course of the book so if you can kind of stick with those chapters I can guarantee you it, it is definitely worth sticking with it um, the big battle scenes are big but they are what they are which is brutal re realistic tellings of kind of how it must have been for the soldiers during those times you know if you're not a lover of reading about war stories um then you know maybe this book isn't for you you know you are going to struggle um but the characters do ground you to it and do make you feel you have a reason to read these sections and to connect with these people and find out what's going on and obviously it's very very relevant to to Russian history during that time and so if you're interested in learning a bit about Russian history it's definitely the way to go um, I didn't however give it five stars I did give it four stars and the only reason for that was um, partially because of these sort of intermittent and there was only I think two or three but occasionally throughout the book where Tolstoy went off on his own little non-fiction es essays but also um, in epilogue one, half of that epilogue is, again, just non-fiction essay. And it isn't until about halfway through that you get to the conclusion of the character's story. And epilogue two, which is completely and utterly a non-fiction essay and isn't really an epilogue. I do feel a little bit like the non-fiction essays in both epilogues one and two were added after the fact. And these were the bits that came with further knowledge and understanding of what happened during those time periods and I know that Tolstoy right up until his death was working on this book this was um a true love uh, you know a true love for him this this book this writing endeavor and he never really finished it um although reading it it does have a conclusion um he just felt in his heart of hearts that it wasn't finished um so that's why I gave it four stars. The, also, the other thing I would say is that if you do read the Vintage Classics edition, which which is beautiful, and we did dip in and out, as I say, on the slightly easier bits to read with less French in, there is an appendices at the back, which is also from Tolstoy, which is extremely interesting and explains some of his um, justifications for writing things the way he did. It does also kind of explain somewhat his battle between it being a historical non-fiction and a um, work of fiction and uh, also has a little bit of non-fiction um, non essay in it as well but you know I've it was only four or five pages so that I actually found that quite interesting to read so yeah so that is my conclusion and, and wrap up of War and Peace so now I'm kind of at a loss not really <laughs> so at the moment as you know from my previous video I am reading Secrets of Southern Girls this is going to be part of a blog tour on my blog on the 12th of June so please check out the link down below and go there on the 12th of June I've got an opportunity for this to be one so I will be doing a very quick video on the 12th of June so if you want to have a copy and a chance to read this, uh, it's only going to be unfortunately in the UK, but if you come to my YouTube channel and leave a comment on that particular video, uh, you're in a chance, in for a chance to win that. If you're external to the US, uh, UK and you're US or elsewhere in the world, uh, there will be a raffle, raffle copter link on my blog. So uh, that will enable you to enter the opportunity there to win it elsewhere in the world. So you aren't going to be excluded, far from it. Uh, so yeah, on to what I'm reading at the moment. Other than Secret of Southern Girls, I'm also reading, she says, frantically trying to open her Kindle. Look how professional I am. You can tell my videos are <laughs> non-edited. Uh, the Handmaid's Tale. 
Now this is the new vintage cover. I actually much prefer the one with the sort of the little lady on it. Uh, but Kindle does like to update its book covers to the latest versions and obviously with the current release of the TV series on Channel 4 on Sunday nights it is uh, unfortunately in that version. So before I move on to The Handmaid's Tale I'm on I think it is about 61% uh, of uh, Southern Girls so um, I'm not far off completing that and I'm on 66% of The Handmaid's Tale which I'm planning on continuing to read today because the second episode is on tonight so I want to try and get as much of a headway as I can on that. Uh, I've also recently received uh, my book Buddy Box for the month of June and that is The Outcasts by Kathleen Kent. This looks fantastic and looks right up my street. I don't know why but I mean look at this beautiful dress. I, I do go to burlesque evenings but that's hey another story. Um, but this looks like um, a woman who's basically going to take a stand against um, a group of men who basically have made their living out of violence and I think she's going to stand her ground against them. So really looking forward to reading that. I also got my beautiful beautiful um, books this month from Victoria at Eve's Alexandria. We are both um, kindly swapping books each month uh, to prevent ourselves from buying too many. Um, I'm not saying that necessarily wins but we're trying and the first book she kindly got me was Jane Harper's The Dry. Uh, I've seen this on a lot of channels and I'm really really looking forward to it. Uh, it's part of the uh, BBC Radio 2 book club choice and I believe is a sort of a tense thriller. I think if I remember rightly, it is it in Australia? I believe it is based in Australia. So again, something a little bit different, different country. So definitely something of interest to me. And uh, she also kindly got me Dissolution by CJ Sansom which I'm a big fan of a historical fiction and I've heard so, so much about these. I've got a funny feeling now that I've picked this up, I actually picked it up this morning and read the first chapter and I've got a feeling I might have actually read this one. Not that that's a bad thing. It means I can then move on to the next one, but I've got a feeling I've read this one. So it's definitely going to be a reread I believe. Uh, I, I've checked my Goodreads as well and I think I actually did read it in 2014 but I think I borrowed it from somebody and I wanted to copy for myself um, and I know since then there's been a lot of other books that follow. I think there's Dark Fire, Sovereign, Revelation, Heartstone and Lamentation so uh, there's at least five more books to read there so yes I think I will definitely start with a reread of that. So now, um, also, there was one other thing that I wanted to say, and that was, uh, I was recently watching Mel's uh, channel, and I noticed that she's now using her Goodreads to have her monthly TBR on. And I thought, oh, what a really good idea. I'm extremely OCD, so any of you that do follow me on Goodreads will see where I'm at pretty much most of the time with my reading and with my reading challenge. Now... I do have a small bugbear because I do think Goodreads should allow War and Peace to be classed as more than one book. However, uh, I have also decided to do as she has done and add books to my TBR, which I'm planning to read on the rest of the month. So for this month, I have obviously got Secrets of Southern Girls and The Handmaid's Tale to finish. But I'm also going to be reading... The Tobacconist by Robert Seethowler. And it's quite a small book. It's, I think it's about 230 pages. So it won't take me long to read that, I don't think. And this beautiful, beautiful book uh, that again was gifted to me by Victoria of Eves Alexandra and I hauled a few, um, few months ago by Catriona Ward, which is uh, Raw Blood, which I believe is basically deemed as a horror love story um, which sounds fantastic so they're on there I also have um, 
another set of books on my Kindle which I have recently purchased which I'm sure I will get to at some point. The first one is by Lars Kepler and it's called Stalker. Now I don't know about some of you but I actually get um, a free Kindle book because I'm a Prime user I get a free Kindle book every month and also because my phone is a Samsung and I updated to a Samsung 7 I also get a free book through Samsung via the Kindle app so um, that's good so I also got um, this one which I believe is going to be a dystopian book called The Man of Legends and that's by Kenneth Johnson I don't know if you can see that very well um, what you can also probably see sneaking up there in the corner of the screen is you guessed it Robin Hobb now I have to take my hat off this is definitely down to Kitty G and um, Mercy from Mercy's Bookish Musings both of them have talked and raved and loved these books and so both Victoria and myself have decided we're going to jump in now uh, Victoria Eves Alexandra has actually read the first couple so I think she's going to um, reread them which is very sweet of her with me uh, and we're going to start with the Farseer trilogy and we're going to break it down and do a buddy read starting in July with those um, and move through the trilogies together to its full and final conclusion now that's quite a lot of books I think uh, we won't necessarily do three books a month indefinitely we might take some time out and have a few gaps I know we've got a couple of other buddy buddy reads that I've got in mind also I have an audiobook which I'm going to be listening to this this month and that is Sarah Winman's A Year of Marvellous Ways again I don't know if you can see that on my Kindle and um, again I've heard things about this on on YouTube and booktube and uh, it looks fantastic I also was very very crafty and before I think Audible cotton on that the fact that there are people who are able to download the Sherlock Holmes Stephen Fry set at you know one token per month instead of the 80 quid that they're charging if you aren't an Audible credit holder um, <laughs> I've downloaded the full set of Sherlock Holmes which is uh, narrated by Stephen Fry and I have to say that is wholeheartedly um, off the recommendation of uh, Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures again um, one of my favourite channels uh, I have actually got some of the stories in the um, in books in volume format in the Knickerbocker um, classics flexi bound editions um, so I'll be able to kind of read and listen is my plan with those so yeah that's where I'm at at the moment and um, I think the next video you'll probably see from me will be uh, a few that have been requested which are uh, favourite books so I look forward to seeing you soon booktube take care for now bye